This video is for the 2019 Spare Room Tool Making Competition run by Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop. I'll put a link to her channel down in the description as well as a link to the playlist with all the other competitors videos in it. There's some pretty neat ideas this year so it should be a tight competition. I haven't watched them all yet but I've been meaning to. This year I'm making a gear so my mill has a fine adjust for the tilt. As it is, you just end up whacking it with a hammer and it's a pain in the neck to get any sort of precise adjustment. So I'm making a gear. This will be my first custom milling cutter and the first gear that I've cut in my machine shop. I am interested to know what the gear this was supposed to interface with looked like. If anybody knows, just leave a comment down below. The tilt mechanism on my milling machine is non-existent. There's a worm gear, or, yeah, the worm, but there's no wheel or no teeth for it to engage into. So I'm going to make one for my, my milling machine. So I have the gear, the worm out, and I've got a chunk of steel, which should be the right size. Do that. I got a present from McMaster Car. Chunk of O1 tool steel that I'm going to make the cutter out of to make this shape. Actually, it will be the tooth shape in this round piece. So I'll walk you through how I'm going to do that. Well, first I need a disc off of here, so I'm going to cut a cookie off and then get machining. There we go. I have this piece centered in my dividing head. Uh, it moves just a tiny bit, but that's definitely close enough for what I'm doing. So according to my calculations, I need a one inch bolt circle around here. So, or hole circles, they're not gonna be bolts. So I'm gonna move over 500 thousandths and start drilling. So now I'm going to machine a three quarter inch stub on the end of here. However, I want it offset 65 thousandths. So here's the setup for making the cutter. Got this with the offset hole, offset boss sticking out. And this goes on. I've got a, a split pin there. And this will get indexed around. And when I make a cut, since it's offset, I'm not going to turn the whole diameter, I'm just going to turn a sixth of the circle and then rotate it then turn another sixth and then another sixth. So this will end up being a slightly lumpy circle, we'll have six circle segments. So here we have the, not the finish, but roughed out gear cutter thing. It's hard to see on camera, but there are flat so it's a point there and there's another one there and if you stand it up it, it doesn't roll it's got a high on the low spot when I made this cutter I didn't think about it but I was like wait I probably should have looked up what they suggest for relief angles so I made them two degrees initially but after looking up in my machinery's handbook and the tooling uh, milling cutters clearance angles 837 837 we have clearance angles from 5 to 13 degrees so I redid this and with a larger offset to my centric and made these relief angles 5 degrees so here we have the gear cutter that I made Got it chamfered to the right angle. So now I just need to put in a keyway 
So I can mount this on the milling arbor to actually cut here to make the teeth. So unfortunately I don't have a brooch or any other good method of cutting a key, internal key. So I'm going to just file it. Hopefully I can do a pretty neat job. This being a tool making competition and all. I'm going to first cut a notch with the hacksaw to help me Well, this is going to take forever. I got the keyway filed. Thankfully, I found a better file than the, just those jeweler files. That was going to take forever. I cut a lot with a hacksaw and then added it, finished it up with a file. So here's the setup. I'm going to make a series of cuts along here, which will make the flutes of my cutter to get my rake on them. I'm going to turn one full turn of the dividing head, which is a 40th of a revolution. I'm looking for about a 10 degree rake. There we have it. It's my cutter. Turns this way now. I get to flip it over so it turns the other way. So this is the cutting point and it has a 10 degree rake and a 5 degree relief. And I suppose I could have just cut these points off here rather than leaving them the notch and just go straight out. Might look better. But I'm late for dinner as it is. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. So the time has come to try to harden my gear cutter. I've got my propane forge going. Got a bucket of oil. So So here's my gear blank for the tilting gear. The only thing I haven't done is cut it to length yet. But this bore is the right size for the pin in the head. And then I s calculated how deep this should be. I left a shoulder here because this is the amount that will stick into the head and the rest of it will get mounted on the machine. So I can check to see if my gear functions while the head is off the machine by setting this down in the hole. And then I have a little step here for, um, for relief for when the teeth get cut. Because if they get any rounding over here, I didn't want them to bind up. So it's a 15,000 step. So here's my gear blank and with the worm gear removed this drops in and fits nicely just a little bit of play just what I'm looking for just the right amount and so this spins nicely here so after I cut the threads or the gear teeth in this face I will be able to tell if this turns by turning this, this should just spin around in circles nicely. And if it does, when this is mounted on the machine, then the head should turn instead and this should be fixed. So this will let me test the fit of everything before I put it all together. So I've got this set up in my dividing head. I've got it blued so I can just make a fine cut and make a mark so I can make sure that I've got all my angles right. I figure if I cut on this side, and I'm a little bit above center. That will mean that I'll get the right angle for the gear teeth, for the worm teeth. I'll get the right angle there. Did all that math. Got my dividing 
head set up for 30 divisions. So I'm going to do just a skim cut. So there we have it. Looking pretty good. It's a little bit more pie shaped than what I had thought they'd come out to be, but. All right, let's cut a few more, make sure we come out with 30. Yeah, it's hard to tell on camera, but those line up pretty well. I've got my angles going the correct direction. So now I just need to cut them all the rest of the way deep. So here it is. Gear fits fairly well. It's not perfect, but hopefully it's good enough. Now I'm going to try taking this out and putting it in. Hopefully I've cut deep enough so there's enough space. If I haven't, I'm kind of in trouble because I can't cut anymore with this cutter. So I'll have to face it off and then cut in a little deeper to get, um, to make it so that this will actually mesh. Or I suppose I could just shorten the whole thing. Actually, that's probably what I'll do. I just make the whole thing a little skinnier. So. Okay, the moment of truth. Sits down. And it... Well, it almost works. The uh, taper pin sticks up so it can't make a full revolution. So, yeah. I did end up having to take a little bit off the back of the gear to make sure that there's more clearance between the teeth and the worm. I'm going to set this up in the dividing head or something similar to drill these holes. And then I realized, wait, I've already got a whole template. So here's the gear all installed. It, it looks pretty good, but we'll see in a minute if it works. I'm going to grease this all up so that the gear has something to lubricate it and also this outside is where the the head actually rides and I want that also nicely lubricated and it's good that I use the the other plate as a drill template because these holes there's only one way this goes on if you rotate it around the screw holes don't line up so leads to another thing this was probably a prototype machine because then we just marked out four holes pretty close to evenly and then probably drilled them by hand, drilled them both through and then tapped them. Here I am testing out the gear for the first time. It works fairly well, however, when the new section of the worm comes around, it bumps into the teeth a little bit and binds just slightly. So it makes it just slightly chunky to rotate around, but it's a heck of a lot better than just whacking it with a hammer to get it to line up correctly. Some of the angles were slightly wrong on my gear as far as how it interfaced with the worm. So that might solve the slight chunking issue, but it might not since the tooth shape changes with the diameter of the gear, or should change, in my case it doesn't change. Here's how I calculated the relief angles for my cutter. So I have my large outer circle, and this is the radius of that circle, that straight line, and here is the center, right there. Here is the circle that I cut as a relief for the cutter angle, and here is its center of the circle. Now, this, let's see, that would go this way. That line is tangent to the blue circle. And this line is tangent to the outer circle. 
and I wanted this to be 5 degrees. Which means, if I did this right, this should be 5 degrees, the difference between those two. And we know this angle because we wanted, in this case, we wanted six sides. So this whole thing out to here is a sixth of a circle or 60 degrees. And so that means that half of that is 30 degrees. Oh yeah, and then we also need, we don't need, but makes it easier to do lines here, across, there, and we have a right angle there. So we've got, we know this distance, um, radius one, and we know um, the, we know two angles and a radius, which we know all the angles and we know the radius, and we really want to find out this distance here. So that distance is just simply this distance, the total, minus that distance. And you can do all the trigonometry and come out with the correct cutter angle. So here's a calculation I messed up on when making my gear. I wanted the gear teeth to have the same angle as the pitch angle of my worm. Now I tried to just measure it with a protractor and I got fairly close but it didn't come out quite perfect. And I know there should be a way to do it with just straight math but I wasn't able to find it on any of the tables in my machinery's handbook or even a formula for it. It might be hidden in there somewhere, but there's a lot of pages, and I didn't get the chance to look at them all. So, how do we calculate this angle? We want to know what it is right here in the middle, because I made a, just a short area for my gear to engage. So we'll think of that as the average angle, and we'll, I know it's a soups at the ends, and it's not quite straight, but we'll just go with it as whatever it is right in the middle, and that'll be a good average. So, I realized... At first I tried to calculate using the diameter and it came out just wrong because I had measured it and I knew what it was supposed to be and it was just wrong. But I realized you need to unroll it. If we unroll it, we get a nice, beautiful straight line. We know the circumference, we know the pitch, and then we can calculate this angle here and that's how far it is off from 90 degrees. So everything works beautifully as soon as you unroll your thread. Because as it is, it's got these weird swoops and it's just, how are you gonna do math on a, on a cylinder? You unroll it. So that's what I came up with. If there's an easier way, let me know. I hope you liked this video. If you did, I'd hope you'd consider subscribing. I've got a virtually endless supply of projects I could make videos about. If there's something I can do better, or if there's a type of video you'd like to see more of, leave a comment down below.